So before assembly, we need to make sure that the tops of the stretchers are perfectly in line with the tops of the legs. The easiest way to do that is going to be to remove the stretcher from the leg assembly and use a nice sharp hand plane, which is going to help to keep the top of the stretcher nice and straight and flat. I'll simply clamp the stretcher in my bench vise, take a couple passes with my hand plane, and then recheck the fit in the leg assembly. And if it's still proud, I'll disassemble it again and continue this way until the stretcher ends up nice and flush with the top of that leg. Now, I realize that the focus of this course is on using hand saws and that you may not yet have a hand plane or know how to sharpen and set up a hand plane. Don't worry about that right now. Our next class on hand plane foundations will take care of all of that and show you how to sharpen, set up, and use a hand plane. For now, if you don't have a hand plane, you can use a block of wood and some 80 grit sandpaper. The block of wood helps to maintain a nice, straight, flat edge on the stretcher. And don't forget to check often because you'd be surprised how fast you can remove wood with sandpaper. Now once the stretchers fit properly, we can move on to drilling them so that we could attach them to the bench top. This is a lot easier to do now before the stretchers are glued to the leg. I'm using screws to attach the leg assemblies to the bench top. Now, before you cry foul and insist that screws don't belong in high-end furniture, understand that even the most high-end elaborate period furniture used nails and screws, especially to attach things like tabletops and the tops of case pieces. In fact, pocket hole screws, which most people consider to be a very modern form of joinery, have actually been in use since at least the early 1700s. So don't turn your nose up at nails and screws. If they're used properly, they are 100% acceptable and appropriate, even in high-end fine furniture. But we can't just go driving a screw right through the stretcher and into the bench top. In order to prevent the stretcher from splitting, facilitate proper screw function and prevent bridging of the screw joint, we need to drill a clearance hole in the stretcher and a pilot hole in the bench top. This is bridging and it happens when the two pieces both have pilot holes that are the same size as the screw's shank. And this has happened to all of us. When you do this, the screw threads bite into both pieces and they thread through both the top and the bottom piece at the same rate. If there's any gap between the two pieces when the screw's driven, the screw will drive tight into the top piece and then it won't pull the two parts together no matter how hard you try. So even if I try to tighten this screw, it's as tight as it's gonna go. It's already driven into this top piece of wood and there's still a gap. That is what we wanna prevent. The correct way to use screws would be to drill a full clearance hole in the top piece so that the screw's threads don't engage with the top piece of wood at all. The screw can slide freely through that top piece and bite into the second piece, and then it will pull those two pieces tightly together. We're gonna to use three different bits to make our pilot holes. The largest size is the size of the screw's head. This is gonna create a flat bottom counterbore so that the screw head will sit below the surface of the wood. The second largest bit is the size of the outer diameter of the threads of the screw. 
and that is going to ensure that the screw has a clearance hole in that top piece. And the smallest bit is the pilot hole that will be drilled in the bench top. This bit is the same diameter as the shank of the screw so that the threads will bite into that bottom piece. To drill the three different holes, we're gonna need some kind of hand drill. Now you can use a corded or battery powered electric drill, but in the spirit of using only muscle powered hand tools, here are two different options. The first is a traditional bit brace. If you decide to go with one of these, I'm gonna recommend that you get one with a chuck that will hold round bits as well as traditional square shank bits like this one. Older ones might be a little bit prettier, but they limit you to only holding the bits with square shanks. A model like this one will not only hold the square shanked bits, but it will also hold round bits as well as hex shanked bits. The second option is a traditional hand drill, also often called an egg beater drill. This drill has a three jaw chuck, very similar to a modern electric drill. These chucks though will only hold round or hex shank bits. They won't hold the traditional square shank bit. And they also typically won't hold bits larger than about three eighths of an inch in diameter. The clearance and pilot holes will be bored in three different steps, starting with the largest hole for the head of the screw. I'm locating the clearance hole a half inch from the end of the stretcher and centered on the thickness of the stretcher. I'm going to use a 3 8 inch bit to bore a very shallow hole for the head of the screw. I don't want this hole to be very deep. Only about three turns after that bit engages. If I drill it too deep, I run the risk that the screw head or the point of the screw could poke through the bench top. Now, there is a centering hole left by the lead screw that I can drop my next bit into. This is the mid-size bit that's gonna create the clearance hole for the screw. And this is gonna get drilled completely through all the way through the stretcher. So we can now dry assemble the stretchers back to the leg again so that we can locate the screw holes in the bench top. Now you want to make sure that you have everything labeled very well so that you can get this all back in the same position later. Otherwise you run the risk of the screw holes not lining up. Now I've got the leg assembly positioned upside down on the bottom of the bench top. I'm lining up the sides of the legs flush with the sides of the bench top. Then I'm gonna use this three quarter inch thick scrap, which is just a cutoff from one of the stretchers. And I'm use, gonna use that to help me position the ends of the stretchers three quarters of an inch from the end of the bench. Once I'm sure I have everything lined up just the way that I want it, A little bit more this way. Okay. Now I want to hold everything in place and without moving it, I'm going to push down on each one of these screws and it's going to leave a dimple where that screw goes. And I want to make sure this is number one, this is number two. So I'm going to label this number one, and number two, so that I can get this back in the same position. Now I can take my drill and drill these pilot holes. So 
So the stretchers can now be glued to the legs. My preferred glue for furniture is hide glue, either in liquid or hot form. However, in sticking with the hardware store slash home center theme for this project, I'm just gonna use regular old yellow wood glue because most hardware stores and home centers just aren't going to carry hide glue. So I'm starting the glue up by putting a thin layer of glue on the inside of the notch of the stretchers because this is end grain and it's going to soak this glue up. So I wanna give it a few minutes to do so and then I'll put a little bit more on after it's soaked up the initial coat. Some people will call this sizing the joint. Uh, it's really something that you only typically do with end grain. Long grain doesn't need to be sized because it doesn't suck the glue in like end grain does. So we'll do that first. Then we can move on, put a little glue on the sides of the notch on the leg. I like this silicone glue brush. A lot of people will use just like a, an acid brush from the plumbing section of the hardware store to apply glue. Um, I like this because I don't have to throw it out when I'm done. I'm not a real big fan of disposable stuff if I can help it. I think our, our landfills are full enough as it is, so any little bit of extra that I can keep out of the landfill, the better. Now putting the leg in the vise is going to help hold things because you could really use a few hands while you're doing this. So I'll put a tiny little bit of glue on the end grain here. That's not really going to provide a whole lot of structural support, but it's better than nothing. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to add a little more glue to this end grain because that end grain has soaked most of it up. And I'm not going to put a ton more glue on here. I think a lot of people just overdo it and put way too much glue. I prefer to avoid excess super amount of squeeze out if I can. But I am going to put a little bit more on this end grain. And this is long grain down here. So we'll put a little drop there. Again, can't hurt. So now, get this arranged. And I can squeeze that in there. And we'll do this one. A lot of people panic when it comes time for glue ups and they rush but if you've got everything planned out you can take your time you don't have to rush you don't have to panic do your dry run make sure you know where everything's going how it's going together have all your parts labeled and laid out and just be ready there's no reason to panic also doing smaller sub assemblies helps so I'm going to do this leg and the other leg and let those dry before we do any more. This one goes over here. If necessary, you can take a little block of wood Give that a little whack. That's not seating. There we go. Yellow glue does tend to seize up sometimes. Another reason I prefer hide glue. Hide glue acts as a lubricant instead of seizing up. 
Now, I always have a little pail of water nearby and a couple towels. Now I can clean up and you squeeze out very easily. And this isn't going to do anything to hurt the glue joint, so a little water is just fine. Much easier to clean the squeeze up up now than it is after it dries. So clean out any squeeze out that you can. You may still end up with a little bit more later, but if you clean up as much as you can now, you shouldn't have as much later. Now the other thing I'm gonna do is I wanna attach or temporarily screw the piece down to the bench top. And the reason I want to do this is because I want to ensure that when this goes together permanently, that this sits square to the bench top. And the only way to do that is to attach it to the bench top and square it up. So I'm going to take a couple of screws. Get this lined up. Screw it in place. So by putting the screws in, I know that I've got the stretchers positioned correctly. What I don't know is how square the leg is sitting to the bench top. So now I can give it a, a check. Oh, and that's beautiful, that's dead on. The other thing I'm gonna do, just to help secure things while the glue dries, is I'm going to put a couple of clamps just on the leg just to kind of help a little bit more hold it all in place. While everything's drying up, the clamps will just help a little bit more. So that's nice and square. Check for any additional squeeze out. A little bit right there. Okay, that all looks pretty good. So now we're just gonna leave that to dry and we'll come back when this is dry and we can finish this assembly up. Now that the glue on the stretchers is dried, I'll disassemble the whole thing to get it ready for making the permanent attachment of the leg assemblies to the top. And once again, I cannot stress enough, make sure that you have all of these parts labeled so that you can get them right back in the exact same orientation that they were. Otherwise your screw holes probably won't line up. So to make the final connection of the leg assemblies to the bench top, I'm going to use a little bit of glue before I put the screws back in. And as I mentioned before, when we were gluing the stretchers to the legs, I started by adding a little bit of glue to the end grain here and uh, letting that soak in a little bit first. Now I'll put a little bit more glue on there. 
And it just needs to soak in for a couple minutes, maybe two, two minutes. Just enough so that the end grain soaks up that excess glue because it will. And uh, if you don't size an end grain joint first, that glue will wick up into the end grain. It's kind of like the end of a bundle of straws. It'll just soak and suck right up into that end grain. And uh, you won't have any glue in that joint. You'll end up starving the joint. But if you size the end grain first, it makes for a much stronger joint. An end grain glue joint isn't that strong to begin with, but we're really going to be relying on these long grain glue joints and the screws, not so much the end grain. Again, remember to keep your towels and your water close by for four, so I know where this goes. Set that in place and we'll get the screws back in. Now it's back to cleaning up squeeze out. And just like before, just to be a little extra cautious, I've added a few clamps. Now don't worry if you're just getting started and you don't have a whole lot of clamps. I've been doing this for probably about 30 years now, so I've collected a lot of clamps over the years. If you've only got a pair of clamps, that's fine. You don't need all these little ones. The screws will hold the cleats or the stretchers just fine to the top. If you just have a pair of clamps, just do one leg at a time. Put your screws in, put the clamps on, clean up all your glue, screw, glue squeeze out. When that dries, then do your other leg and reuse the same two clamps. So don't worry if you don't have a whole lot of clamps. I just happen to have a bunch of them from years of experience doing this. So um, I was able to do everything all at once and even add a few extra clamps just for an overabundance of caution. So now that this is all glued up, we're gonna let this sit overnight and then we'll come back tomorrow and do the finish.